So we now come to the algorithmic part of how to find minimax path to a given seed. And uh, this is how it goes. So you've seen this bit of pseudocode before when we were discussing shortest path in lecture six. Uh, let's briefly go through this again. Uh, we have some graph, we have some source S, and we have distances to S. Um, the distance of S to itself is zero. Um, the distance for every other node in my set of vertices except S we set to infinity. And then we put all the nodes of the graph on a queue prioritized by these distance values, by these D values. Um, then we pop a um, node with the smallest distance, um, well, we extract it from um, the queue. Um, so we, we have uh, something that grows from the source, and um, by extracting it from the queue, we say that this has now been added to our um, partial graph, or to our growing graph. And um, now we look at the forward star fs of this node v. So this is the node v, and the forward star, these are just all the nodes which are connected by edges from v to u. In an, um, so this is meant here for a directed graph. In an undirected graph, well, you know, each neighbor would be in the, in the forward star. So we look at all the edges from v, from v to neighbors u, and then we do the following. For the shortest path, um, we update this uh, distance of u um, to be the smaller of the current distance or the distance up to node v plus the weight of the edge from v to u. So in other words, if um, the shortest, if the cost of the shortest path that we've previously found um, remains the lowest, then we keep it, we don't do anything. If, on the other hand, the cost of the shortest path to v plus the cost of the edge from v to u, if this is smaller than the best previous cost, then we update our new estimate for how far this node is from this, uh, the source or the seed. Uh, so we, we did this before, and uh, there was a, a demo that, that you could go through in detail. Now, for the minimax path, we can use essentially the same algorithm with one difference. So d of u was the cost of the best path we found so far. And now we explore a possible new path, namely um, the, the minimax path from the source to node v, and then we consider the edge from v to u. And if it's only the single most expensive edge that matters, well, we have to take the bigger of the two into account. So this, um, this now gives us the minimax path from s to u via v. And if this is lower than the best previous cost, then we update our new estimate for the minimax distance between u and s. Uh, let's look at this in terms of pictures. And um, again, uh, I will use the beautiful slides from Kevin Wayne here. There are various flavors of Prim's algorithm, and uh, this one here is the eager implementation. So. We start with some vertex, and uh, here on the right-hand side, we have all these costs, which uh, unfortunately are not uh, drawn in the picture. Um, but so starting at zero, we have these possible neighbors, two, seven, four, and six. And uh, we will now pick the lowest of these four costs. 
there are these four candidates. Um, the cheapest one would be the edge to the node number seven. Um, so we're going to use that. And now we look at what neighbors seven brings to the game. Seven has these four neighbors and um, these new edges will also be considered. And um, we now visit these edges in ascending order. And let's see if something interesting happens at some point. There, something interesting happens, um, namely, um, we had already previously um, found that the distance of four to zero was given by the cost of this direct edge. But now, having come this far, we find that there is a new edge, which actually has a somewhat lower cost. And uh, then an update happens, huh? so now, the cost here is updated and the cheapest or the, the minimax path is actually via this detour here. Okay, and you can continue this until you have a total of n minus one edges and uh, then you know you're done. Okay. So um, this is called Prim's algorithm. We start at the source node. We always follow the lowest edge weight outward. Um, we accumulate edge weights not by adding, but by simply always taking the biggest edge weight that was encountered so far. And you see that this, we continue until we have a tree, a, a spanning tree. And you see that this algorithm is essentially identical to the shortest path algorithm, except that uh, you know, for except for this tiny detail here. Um, up there, we considered the sum of the best previous cost and the new edge weight, and here we only consider the bigger of the two. Um, was it more expensive to get here? or is the next edge the single most expensive one? Um, so the code is identical up to this minute but important detail. And well, the fact that um, the code here is so similar and that these problems are so similar, um, this points us to a deep relation between this problem, you know, they're all shortest path problems in some sense, just with various definitions of what it means to be short. And um, this is something that we will bring together in a nice unified picture in the next, uh, so next week, in terms of algebraic graph theory. <laughs>